Say hi, I'm Richard McDougall in the CTO office at VMware and uh, I'm here at VMworld and managed to, to grab uh, a couple of interesting people to talk about big data. So um, Zubin's here from uh, Mu Sigma and uh, he's the head of innovation at Mu Sigma and they're a consulting company that does uh, a lot of in, uh, application development. I really wanted to sort of dig into the details of like mm. what do the application architectures look like. Sure. Um, so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you do and dig into some questions. Sure. Uh, so I, uh, I head up innovation at Mu Sigma. Uh, it's a large professional services company. The lar we call us the largest pure play analytics provider in the world. And what I mostly do is with the innovation area is to keep up, keep track of all the, the newest technologies and the newest statistical techniques, and then drive that through our ecosystem. Yeah. So big data is one of those new technologies that we're definitely in the last two years been very interested in yeah. from the analytics perspective. Yep, that's been a really interesting space for VMware. Recognizing yeah. that it's a big space for us to grow into and applying our technology to the space as well. Yeah. What are some of the interesting uh, use cases that you see that? Uh, yeah, yeah. So w one thing we think when we think of big data, you know, a lot of people think it's well, it's about the data. It is about the data. But we even, to me, it's more of a metaphor of a lot of disruption in the industry. So I've been in this business about 18 years, decision sciences. The last 18 months, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I mean, the excitement, the it's kind of like, right. like a renaissance is yeah. going on in the industry with respect to this computational uh, infrastructure that uh, you know Hadoop and big data technologies are providing. So to me, it's more of a metaphor for disruption. And what we're seeing because of that, we're seeing a lot of people rethinking about you know their data infrastructure. What what should the future look like? How can we handle petabytes of data? that we're soon be having and how does how does the analytics fit in and, and what technologies uh, should we be thinking about today so one of the interesting things is I often hear um, analytics equals Hadoop and no, so yeah. what so if you you've had a lot of experience building real applications so yeah. what are the components you would see good question. Just to application? good question so usually what it starts is that the client will say you know we have a big data application we want to you know what do we do we have, we have these use cases um, so it usually starts with the data tier right where you you see you see a, um, a relational world and you see the Hadoop world you do see them coexisting. So we do see, you know, writing SQL to the relational tables. But a lot of that sometimes is, is actually processing that information into the Hadoop HTFS layer. Yep. So we, we ETL that information into the HTFS. The reason why we do that is we want to run our, our analytics algorithms onto the Hadoop platform. Okay. But it's not always Hadoop. I think I, it works, depends on the definition of Hadoop. A lot of people think Hadoop is MapReduce and HTFS. But I think from hearing some of the talk today, Hadoop is more than MapReduce. It looks like you know the new 2.0 version of Hadoop is more about a parallel model where you can pick and choose different parallel models you like for your use case. Yep. But on top of that, we have a middle tier. And the middle tier is usually, for the analytics perspective, is uh, we're seeing a lot of traction with you know, Java and R, especially R. R is being utilized on the cluster itself. So you're saying that people don't necessarily write MapReduce no. uh, in raw MapReduce. So how common is it for people to actually write raw MapReduce Yeah, that's Java? a good question. So a lot of people, like, they're usually, they'll decompose their analytics work into two areas. One is all the ETL that has to be done. And the ETL, they'll, they'll pick either Pig or Hive. Depends on uh, what their preference is. But we're seeing Hive is used more and more just because people know SQL already. Yep. So they'll do their processing, get the model-ready data from that ETL perspective. Okay. Then they'll switch over to, like, let's say R. And then there's two choices there. One is there's some packages, you know, like RMR is one, yep. where you can have, actually, you have to write MapReduce in this case. The good thing about Hive, you just write SQL and it you know, compiles it in MapReduce for you. But on the R side, uh, you do have to, in the Java side for analytics, you do have to write some MapReduce jobs today. There actually isn't a lot of libraries that are available okay. in parallel form for the techniques we use. So if I just take a standard R program and just yeah. run it on RMR, does it run in no. parallel? Across no, the good, great right. question. See, see, I think that's the, no pun intended, the big elephant in the room. Um, for what we call embarrassingly parallel problems, like for statistics, counts, max, mins, averages, medians, easy to do, yep. right? Parallelizable very easily. Yep. If you want to run a generalized linear model, like a regression, logistic regression, a Poisson regression on a huge data set, that's not so easy to do. You can't just take a package from R and run it. It doesn't work. Okay. You have to parallelize the algorithm so it runs in that environment. So it sounds like there's a layering that's going on here. We've got all the data being ingested into HCFS. Yeah. Then we've got some uh, map reduced, but mostly people are writing in Hive on top of that. Right. And then we've got an additional layer on top of that. Right. Which is um, the, the, uh, an advanced analytics layer right. or that's something where that's yeah. where R fits is it? Yeah, that's R or in, in Java we're seeing, and um, those are the two major tools. Uh, Weka libraries, so they try to leverage. But they're writing a lot of map reduced jobs in Java. But the cool thing about 
about R, is that a lot of people are treating like a controller, like a glue code. Yeah. Well, they'll submit an R Hive job through R, they'll submit an RMR job through, okay. uh, a MapReduce job through R, and they can process that data into a data frame and do some local information. What about um, Python? I heard sci-fi. Python, Python too. Python. Okay. That's a good one. Actually, Python's actually quite popular as well. So, I missed that one, sorry. So what happens then as far as, like, so we've got this platform which almost looks pans like to run the MapReduce task, yeah. but now I've got to run some Python, I've got to run some R, right. I've got to run some R connected to it. So right. is, there, is there something missing here? Is there some framework component? Yeah, I think so. Here? There's some orchestration layer, right, to kind of link all these things together and, and kind of automate the workflow in essence, you know? So once you have these jobs done, you have to automate them usually. Okay. And they have to score something or produce some output. Usually if it's successful, in a continuous fashion, right? Um, so a couple things. So if you have data in at rest, we call it uh, like your, your 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 classic batch data versus data in flight. The data at rest, what we're seeing is the best practice is people are, are using BPM tools, uh, using actually using a business process modeling tool, adding co custom components like a HDFS component, um, a MapReduce component, an R component, and making that part of a process flow right. on the batch side. That's interesting. Okay. On the real time side, I think that's evolving. So uh, there's message queues. We're seeing Camel uh, routing. Uh, we're seeing Tibco products yeah. being used a lot there, and we're also seeing some of these newer technologies like Spark or, and Storm from like from Twitter uh, that may have some merit there. But that's I think that's not as uh, evolved as the more of the batch side. Right, that makes sense. Great. All right. Well, thanks very much. Good, Good discussion. Thanks for thanks time. Appreciate it. Cheers.